So for starters, I definitely always like to know, especially with songwriters, how you got started in music and if there was like a point where you knew like, okay, I am going to make this my career or did it just kind of start rolling? No, there was a point when I realized that to be a school teacher, uh, you had to finish college. Oh, okay. And uh, I couldn't do that. Uh, and failing out of college left me very few options, waiting tables or uh, writing songs. And I did both for a while and I like writing songs better. All right, so have you been writing songs since you, I mean, was that something that started when you were younger? Like what inspired you to kind of like sit down and put pen to paper? Yeah, I got a guitar when I was a senior in high school and started kind of piddling with other people's songs and learning cover songs and things like that. And then pretty shortly after that, started writing just really terrible songs. And uh, you know, you filter those out and you play them in front of people and they laugh at you and talk about how bad it is. And then you go back and try to get a little better and fewer people laugh hopefully every time so that's good that's definitely good now one song i know nobody's laughing at and everybody loves is stronger it's a great big hit and it's kind of taken on the life of kind of like an anthem and uh what is the story behind that song and how'd you come up with that uh, i got together to write with my cousin zach crow who's a great writer and a guy named ashley gorley who is a, a another great writer here in town and we sort of started talking about the idea of our fathers and grandfathers, and, and as fathers ourselves, sort of the way you want to be represented in your children's eyes, kind of. And uh, wrote it as a real simple song, kind of to reflect that, and it's taken on this much larger, you mentioned anthem, and it has kind of become this anthemic thing for us. And you know, you get people that say it reminds me of even my aunt or my mom or something like that. It doesn't have to just be this strong male figure, I don't think, it just has to do with that strength and that work ethic that I think we all uh, strive to attain. That's kind of the great thing about songs too is when you write it for a certain reason, you know, fans can take it and, and make it their own, you know? And that's one of my favorite things about the process. You know, when you write a song and it goes on a record, whether it's yours or somebody else's, and then you hear someone else's story of what it means to them, and it may be exactly your same thing, it could be totally different, uh, but it's incredibly flattering when it takes kind of takes legs and runs off on its own. It's great. Yeah, definitely. And it also is uh, with in a Chevy commercial, right? It is, yeah. They chose it for uh, their launch campaign of their new Silverado truck, and hopefully that will last a decade or so. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, I also want to talk a little bit about your most recent album. And um, what would you say was on that album that maybe would have surprised fans or maybe something on that album that you were most excited to like get get out there? Well, Strong was a big part of it, um, and then there's some other songs. You know, this is our first real foray for me as an artist into country radio as the artist and not just the writer. So I'm excited about the whole thing, I mean, really and truly. I feel like the album really represents where I am as an artist, where the band is, and they're great songs to play live. Um, and I'm just excited for more and more people to get to hear these songs. And then hopefully they go back and, you know, there's nine other albums worth of material, so hopefully they continue to sort of search the catalog and, uh, and come to a show and we can become a decade and a half overnight success. That would be awesome. Uh, now, you spoke of, you know, you've been writing songs for other people for a long time now. You're taking, you know, the leap in, in, as the artist singing the songs. What is, do, is there a difference between when you write a song for that you know yourself is going to sing versus writing a song that you know somebody else is going to sing? There's not for me. I'm sure there are for those people. I, I don't tend to write that way. I tend to just try to write what I feel like is a great song. And then there are a few that I sort of go, oh, I'm going to keep that in my pocket. And the other ones, some of them lay around. Somebody may pick them up. And if they don't, then I record them. So it's, it's not a real difference for me. I, I'm not to the point where I go, okay, let's write a song for Lady A. You know, I've been fortunate enough to have Lady A like a song and want to record it. But that's not a, it's not a different process for me at this point. And uh, you wrote, uh, Even If It Breaks Your Heart, right, uh, Eli Young Band song, and that is a fantastic song and has done really well. Was that, I mean, I think that song speaks to a lot of people who have dreams and are just, like, really diligently working towards something. Is that kind of autobiographical at all for you? It is totally autobiographical. It was uh, Eric Pazley and I wrote that together. And when we sat, we didn't have any ideas. We had nothing musically or lyrically, and we just started talking about growing up, and I was telling him about me growing up in Nashville and sitting outside of clubs before I could get in, you know, falling in love with music. And then we started talking about him growing up in this little town in Texas and having those same kind of things. And once we sort of got that ball rolling, we'd written the song in, you know, 15 minutes probably. And, uh, and I think it was a huge foot in the door for both of us as writers 
and as artists. I mean, you know, because we were both really in that place at that point of really trying to live this dream that keeps smacking you in the face and, and telling you to go home, and you just keep walking into the wall. And, um, you know, and it's been great. I mean, you know, he had a number one record two weeks ago on his own as an artist. And so it's something that for me as a friend, I'm incredibly excited for him, obviously. Uh, and, and, you know, but it's also inspiring for me because it does kind of rekindle your hope that like, oh yeah, we can do this. Uh, and there is a way to get these songs out here and get people to hear them. So it's incredibly autobiographical. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. It's such a great song. I think it could speak to so many people trying so many different things, you know? So um, then also, I know, like you said, I mean, this isn't your first album, you know, that you've made. You've been in the business a long time. Looking back over the years, what are like one or two moments when you just like career pinch me moments when you just can't believe this is happening to you? Well, there was a lot of stuff with Even If It Breaks Your Heart that really started that. I mean, the, the process of even just getting that song recorded, because that wasn't something I had intended on. I didn't have a publishing deal. I didn't have anybody out working these songs. I was just making records in my basement. And so to even have someone record one of those songs was the start of kind of this incredible journey. And then, you know, it ended with being nominated with nominated for Song of the Year for the Grammys and for the CMAs and the ACMs. You know, and you find yourself out there in those situations. And it's a, it was a big series of pinch me moments. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations on all that. It's amazing. <laughs> and what would you say, um, you know, with your album and, and all the things that you've done, what would something that you would want the fans to know most about you and most about your music? Uh, I mean, most about me, I think it tends to be more personal stuff. I mean, you know, I, I'm incredibly normal. I mean, you know, I, I dropped my kids off at school before I came here. I, I want to spend time with my wife and get to raise my boys and coach Little League and all of those things that are incredibly boring. Uh, TMZ would follow me around for about 10 minutes and be like, okay, let's go home. So, I mean, there's that. Uh, musically, you know, I hope that they just continue to discover uh, what I have done up to now. And then we'll continue. I've been incredibly lucky to have a great fan base that's let me really grow as an artist. Oh, and keep what is for you is, is the best part about the country music like so, genre? I grew up in Nashville, so I mean, I've been around it my whole life. Just even as a you know, when they used to do fanfare, which is now CMA Week, yeah. you know, that was a, a revolutionary idea when you think about it, like that you've started this whole, and there's still no genre that can do that. There's nothing else like that anywhere. There's music festivals, but there's nothing where you can go and the artists stand in a booth and you can come and get an autograph and, and get a picture made. Like, that's a, an incredible thing. And, you know, you get to do that, getting to do the Grand Ole Opry and things like that and being a part of this family. And it really is that. It's a big just like a real family, it's big and dysfunctional, and there's people don't get along, and they argue, and it's 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 a wonderful thing to to be a part of. And everywhere you go, there are people that you know they still listen to the radio and buy these records, and let you they want to hear great stories, whether they're sad or happy, they kind of want all of that. And as an artist and as a writer, you couldn't ask for a better group of people to play music for. Yeah, that's awesome, and it's, it's so true. And you can feel the com the sense of community. I think in country music, that's what's really. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, we're just kind of getting going in 2014 and everything. So what's what do you have on the books for this year? What should fans be looking forward to? Are you going to be out on the road? Yeah, we'll have a new single, uh, you know, in the next 10 or 12 weeks, probably. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to be on the road a bunch. And there's some great fairs and festivals and things like that. And we've got some big tour stuff that we won't announce until closer to the fall, but some stuff that we're really excited about. We'll make sure.